five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. It's time for that weekly Mod Collection Demo Shop update. Last week, we talked about how they also have a Custom Shop Exclusives 1 of 1 collection, but it appears to be all the same stuff, just in a slightly different order. So we'll check with them again next week, but let's get into this week's offerings. Starting things off this week, we have an SG Standard in graphite metallic finish. But who cares about that? I'm sorry, ma'am. Quadruple Firebird pickups has happened. Three of them inlaid in our new custom swoopy pick guard. One has a ring. It's got the stop bar to pneumatic, uh, an extra knob over here, UFO style instead of a toggle switch? What? And then four other controls. How did they wire that? Apparently, four independent volumes in a master tone. Okay. I guess that makes sense. I'm really glad I didn't buy this because I don't want to demo all those different tones. Oh my goodness. Because like you can have 10% of the neck pickup, 20% of whatever you want to call this and that, like 100% that. There would be so many different tonal opportunities, not even including your master tone. That's pretty creative. I like it. But to follow up Firebird pickups, we've got a Firebird custom that has humbuckers, as the custom model typically does, but we've got a beautiful purple finish on this called Electron Purple. Looks like we've got the matching headstock, and it is a complete refinish for 5000 But now let's talk about this one. They called it the Les Paul Special Custom, which is a terrible name. It's like the whole classic custom custom classic thing that happened. It gets confusing because a Les Paul Custom's a thing, a Les Paul Special's a thing. But they call this one Solar Eclipse of Art. It's at a ridiculously high price tag of 6600 so normally a special looks like this. You got two regular P90s over here, but this one has the dog ear P90 covers over top of it. Then we've got a big solar eclipse going on here, and then you've got a cool little space finish. You can tell it's actually a special rather than a junior that's just been modified because we have the bound rosewood fretboard. The back was also done up in a very awesome cosmic stew finish. They just didn't call it cosmic stew this time, and it's got a little bit more blues in it. I really do dig that but this one is number 63 of their special guitars. But now look at this headstock. Inlaid in Mother of Pearl is a spaceship. More specifically, the Saturn V, which is a retired American super heavy lift launch vehicle developed by NASA under the Apollo program. We've never seen this from the mod collection before. Either A, they're gonna start to get really fancy with inlay work, which I would be all for, or B, this was something more special and it got remade. Like for example, my freaky eye firebird that we documented in this episode, I later found out that that was not ever created for the mod collection. It was actually an internal art contest within Gibson and that's what won and apparently it hung up at some Gibson offices for quite some time until they decided to sell it out through the mod collection. There were also some Les Paul Studios done up in a few different hues that had like creepy trees on it. So occasionally the mod collection really is just an outlet for them to let go of things that they don't really know what to do with because you can't necessarily just send that out to a dealer and have full warranty on it. So hear me out here. They called this Solar Eclipse. I went down here and it said it's a 2017 Les Paul Special. Hmm. Solar Eclipse 2017. This model actually existed. So I was kind of thinking, is this one of these or was it maybe a prototype for this run? And the reason why I say prototype is if you look at this, it's got the rich light fretboard. It's got the dark mother of pearl inlays. It actually has a humbucker and a stop bar tailpiece with the ABR1 bridge. Now, to be fair, you can hide a lot of sins underneath all this new finish, but I don't think Gibson would replace the fretboard. That's why I think maybe prototype, but they spruced it up with a new paint job. I could be completely off base, but if we start to see more custom inlay work from the mod team, things are going to get real crazy <laughs> real quick. But so far, at the time of recording, there's not enough love for somebody to pay that much quite yet. But if that special was too crazy for you, here's a lefty done up in a straight ambered over natural color. It's got an interesting vibe. It almost looks like it has an ebony fretboard, but it doesn't. And then you've got cool P90 pickups here with those alligator skin covers. And oh, here we get standard tuners on a special. <laughs> if semi hollows are more your style, there was a Silver Sparkle 64 reissue. I've got to say, Silver Sparkle mixed with black works. The headstock just completely disappears now, although that makes the historic truss ride cover really stand out. But oh, hey, random black stinger. Not quite sure if that works on this model, but it does play off the whole black plastics and hardware. So I'll give it to him there. We also had a regular flying V. Looks like they swapped up our pickups a little bit, but left the rest relatively alone. 
And now check this SG Custom. I love this name, Pool Shark Green. You know, like a billiards table, ultra blinged out on the edges with the gold. That would look great hanging up at a bar, but people would probably ding it up with their pool cues. <laughs> I feel like this could have been dressed up just a tad bit more. Maybe they could have put the positioning diamonds on the back of the neck or something. I'm not surprised that one sold quick. But check out Golden Sparkle on this standard 60. That is a beautiful sparkle finish, really in your face. Extra gaudy with having gold hardware on top of that, but I say that in a good way. Matching golden tuners, brass truss rod cover. Oh, nice, full on refinish and you get the moto back plates. I bet they probably could have pulled four grand out of that one. But holy cow, 11 pounds. That's pretty heavy for a modern guitar. Next, we've got an Explorer that kind of looks like one of the 70s Explorers. I'm not exactly sure if that's what it is or not, but it's in a satin black. But huh, confusingly enough, has one of those DS serial numbers on it. Usually you see that on like the really cool exotic ones that they're super proud of. But Gibson has never actually formally came out and said, yeah, that's the only thing we're going to use it on. But I really like this custom. It's called the Black Cat's Pajamas. This really reminds me of the Ranchero custom. Tuxedo Ranchero, where they just did a whole bunch of pinstripes and stuff. This is on reverb if you're interested in making an offer. But anyways, you go from this to this, you get similar vibes, but this time it's like the exact opposite. Those two would go great together. I really like that additional layer line right here. It really makes the binding look way thicker than it is, and it illuminates the entire top. It's like you have an LED strip going around it. Then you got this random peacock over here, then some other fancy embellishments. But to me, I love the fact that they continued something on the back. Looks like some sort of a building to me, and then the neck even has a whole bunch of it going on. And then we even have the outline of a stinger, a double stinger. This thing's pretty cool. I was tempted to pick it up, but if you're interested in it now, sorry, somebody scooped it up. I bet you might see that one on reverb though. However, surprisingly, I have been seeing less and less of these mod collection demo shop guitars getting flipped. So it seems most people are actually really enjoying them. Next up here, we've got a 335 USA figured in grapefruit gloss. It is a little bit different than your traditional Cherry 335, but they did a top and back refin and left the natural neck alone, which I think looks pretty good on that one. Here's kind of an interesting tribute done up in Musco Burst. I hate to say it, but I do kind of like it. It's got a very swamp grunge monster vibe to it. Gold hardware, interesting choice, but again, I think it blends with this and the black plastics. But then you switch it over to the back, flat black satin finishes, and then you get an ambered neck. This thing is a whole mess of colors, but it's sold. And then lastly, we've got a 335 figured USA production again, but with custom shop VOS treatment. They also played with the pickups, hardware, all that good stuff. It's got some decent figuring. So overall, I would say that's one of the more exciting offerings the mod collections put out within the past month or so. Now you'll notice that we only talked about 13 guitars this week. That's because the kids had a snow day, it threw me off. So I was eight minutes late to the party. So if you happen to have purchased or seen the three that I potentially missed, please let me know and we'll cover it next week. But now it's time to swap over to the demo shop. We actually did have a crazy custom color this week. It was on this 61 Les Paul SG standard reissue. We've seen this before in the mod collection. I called them like Christmas SGs. They take down the cherry aniline dyed finish and then they refinish it in something else, but the dye has just gotten so deep into the wood they didn't fully get it out. Or maybe they weren't trying and they wanted to have this two-tone colored effect. But what's cool here is you got these jade pickup covers mixed with a little bit of chrome, it looks like. Maybe even gold every other one, like rose gold treatment. It's definitely an acquired taste. But to get a custom shop at this price, it didn't seem that bad. We had a lefty explorer. You don't see these every day. There was also an SG standard. They played with the pickups and gave it gold hardware. Yeah, if I'm showing you this, you know it was kind of a rough week for the demo shop. But they also had the standard 60s. Again, played with the pickups. It has a pretty nice top. Lots of wood grain figuring with the cherry back. And then they had a Les Paul Studio that they unconventionally modified the pickups with. However, thankfully, the European side of things had a few very interesting pieces. So look at this Les Paul. Do you see something wrong with it? Somebody's gone into Photoshop and stretched it. <laughs> this is one of those seven string Les Paul standards. Now we've reviewed the Les Paul traditional 12 string, which is kind of a weird thing. And we've also reviewed the Angel of Death seven string SG on the channel, but I haven't yet documented this one. But what makes these so strange looking is A, the headstock is very off balance, but B, it's the inlays. For whatever reason, instead of making the inlays a little bit bigger to match the new wider neck, 
they just left them the same size, which ends up making them look like the tiny trapezoid inlays that were very shortly used in the 2000s-ish era. And once you see it, you never unsee it. But at the same time, had they made them bigger, it would probably even look strange too, so you're gonna lose if you do and if you don't. But these are pretty rare nowadays, so being able to pick one up for 2800 that was a very fair price. Judging by the fact it only had one watcher, that must have sold instantaneously. They also had a 61 reissue. Now this is just a Gibson USA SG, but the reason I'm sharing this one is it's got some decent wood grain going on with the body. But look at that headstock, obnoxiously wide. This thing must be pretty old. And then I flip to the back and holy cow, 2008. That's one of the oldest guitars we've seen in a long time. I mean, technically they had that like 86, 87 prototype custom light at one point in time. That was incredibly old, but this is a different kind of old. But this must have been on loan or at some sort of a showcase because it's definitely got some players wear. Even Schaller strap locks put onto it. But that one was offered up at about 1250 and then for a little under 3200 they had just a nice white les paul custom it's another one of those toured slash gigged guitars because it has lots of discoloration pretty much all over this thing like the more photos you go through the more you realize oh it's discolored here too there's lacquer chipping around each tuner i mean this thing is a decade old at this point from 2012 got a couple of finished check lines wow somebody wore this les paul low to get scratches in that area but relatively speaking, the neck isn't too badly beat up. So that was a solid option for someone. All right, troglodytes, that is going to end our recap for this week. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know your favorite one down in the comment section, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.